Great. So uh, welcome again, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time. So as you know, today we'll be discussing SAM and SLM, software asset management and software license management. So we have two guest speakers today, uh, Daniel from, um, he is the item consultant and he'll be demonstrating to us the ServiceNow platform. Thank you, Daniel, for being here with us. And Michal will be demonstrating the OpenLM, the SLM side of things. And so we just want to show you how the both solutions complement each other and how you can achieve audit and budgeting with the service now and then the cost reduction um, aspect and the optimization with, um, with OpenLM. So uh, we have a few things to get through today. So let's, uh, let's just get into, straight into it. Michal, if you would like to take over and show us um, sorry, Daniel, if you would like to start and show us the ServiceNow platform and we'll just, uh, yeah, just get into that. Uh, thanks, guys. I certainly will. Can you see Thank my screen? You. Yeah, we can. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jana. I'm glad to be here to be presenting ServiceNow as a platform and our capabilities around asset management and especially when it comes to engineering licenses and how we can uh, manage control and automate the process around software asset management around engineering licenses. And uh, as mentioned, my name is Daniel Norlin. I'm a solution consultant at ServiceNow. So I'm a specialist regarding our asset management capabilities. And when we talk about asset management at ServiceNow, we talk about software asset management, <clears throat> which is could be uh, everything from SaaS to on-prem server state and engineering licenses hardware asset management, like uh, connected devices in the organization, but also enterprise asset management, non-connected devices that could be managed. And what better to solution to manage different types of assets than uh, ServiceNow, a platform uh, where you can handle everything. And for those of you that are a little bit new to ServiceNow, just one minute introduction. So we call ourselves the platform or platforms. Uh, the majority of customers they use ServiceNow for IT service management, how to manage incident response and change, but we can do uh, quite a lot more. So we talk about the CMDB, the, the database in the middle, and we can manage everything from the technology workflows, uh, where we talk about the IT department, employee workflows, uh, like uh, the human resource part, how we can automate onboarding, offboarding, and so on. Customer workflows, when we uh, manage processes and automating workflows around the, the end user customer, but also create the workflows when uh, the development side of it. So at its core, the now platform is basically the CMDB, the huge database with all the data in different records and tables in the cloud, could be on-prem if, if you really need to, but preferably in the cloud. And you can access it, or you can actually, we have the seamless integrations to various parts of the organization, because you want to populate the CMDB with data in order to be automating processes. So everything from discovery, our own now discovery to integrations and uh, connections to the, the public cloud, uh, but also to various sales tools, uh, ready-made integrations and service graph connectors to everything from sales to, to marketing, the ERP uh, tools, uh, HR and uh, supply chain solutions. And for the, for fillers and end users, they can access the platform through the now mobile uh, and text messages, the, the normal interfaces through the web browser, or it could be through Teams or, or Slack or any other type of tool. Where, where, uh, and you can receive and uh, ingest data that way. And ServiceNow, the CMDB in the middle. So all types of assets could be managed for end user software, the devices, the end user connected to any SaaS solution, platform as a service or infrastructure as a service, 
or the local data center, uh, on-prem servers, mid-servers and licensing servers, or, or uh, hosted uh, solutions from a third-party hoster or the public cloud like Azure, AWS, and uh, Google. Uh, so regardless where you have your assets, your software, your instances, we can manage it in one platform because one platform, we use the same data model, the same architecture, and the power is that you, how you can automate a lot of these processes, uh, especially when you have all the data in the same database. And we talked about three different areas of asset management. We will focus on software asset management today and industry software and especially engineering applications. But I just want to show you that any type of software, regardless if it's the end user or server state, if it's a cloud resources, integrations to SaaS providers, or if you want to handle your different connected hardware devices, end user computers, networking devices, mobile devices, or, or physical servers uh, could be managed. Or even any type of assets could actually be managed and automated in the platform. And when you're managing assets, it, it has a lot to do with other parts of the organization. So for IT service management, you're filing an incident. That means that uh, both the hardware and the software may be related to that incident, and you have to manage it through the process. Operations management, uh, or of course, uh, strategic portfolio management needs to know uh, where you are in your asset space. Or as I mentioned, HR, onboarding, offboarding is also a matter of, of asset management. When you need a new computer, you need access to various software, for example, and risk and SecOps as well. And that moves us in to closer to today's uh, topic, IT asset management. And regardless if we talk about an end user computer, uh, access to Office 365 or access to an engineering application like AutoCAD. So a user requests that as access. It could be a new employee during the uh, human resource onboarding process, or it could be a temporary project and a number of consultants that suddenly need access to a number of applications, uh, engineering applications or SaaS applications or on-prem. Regardless, so you have a need, they request it, and you need to request it somewhere. You need to fulfill it. Do you have sufficient number of computers in stock? Do you have a sufficient number of licenses for, to fulfill these needs? And how should you provide that access and deploy it? You want to monitor, are the users actually using it? And uh, maybe you have to do a true up on the current agreement, the re renewal of that agreement. So you want to optimize your licensing usage before re you renew the agreement. Or you want to know the cost for different cost center, business unit, country uh, entities, for example. And as I mentioned, 10% of uh, all end user computers tend to have an incident or two. So that when you manage an incident, uh, it's also something that concerns the hardware and maybe also the software. And also, when you retire an end user computer, maybe someone is off boarded from the organization or that temporary project with all these uh, consultants is terminated. Do you have a process for retiring? So the power of service now and software asset management, especially on the platform is that when you have the data in the CMDB, you can automate the process uh, in all these steps in the life cycle of the asset. And that moves us in uh, to the demo space. I'm going to show some of these tasks, how you can manage it in the ServiceNow platform and the power of the ServiceNow platform. So let's move into the user interface. So this is the workspace. This is the view, as you see it, as a fulfiller uh, when you're managing and you're a license manager or an asset manager or working in the IT department or just uh, uh, manager of a business unit when it comes to engineering application, for example. 
So you have this view of uh, the most common tasks that you want to do. You can see these widgets. So if I want to see what publishers are out to compliance, I can just click it and drill down into the data. In the activity center on the right hand side, I can have the most important tasks when I see if there are any removal candidates, these automated jobs that finds software that is not used, or some alerts that some normalization needs to be updated. Maybe some scheduled jobs have failed and I have to look into it, or maybe I have some new requests that I want to fulfill, for example. And if I would like to fulfill them, I need to see, all right, do we have any sufficient licenses and how does the license workbench look like? So we're talking about engineering licenses. So let's uh, dig into the license usage of some of these engineering applications. So in the license usage tab, I can have an overview of all <clears throat> inventoried applications and all entitlements. I have pinned the most interesting ones. And for the purpose of this demo, Microsoft is a huge vendor often used, but also Esri in Autodesk could be very interesting. So let's dig into the Autodesk applications. And we can see that in this environment, we have three different products. Two of them, we are compliant, and one of them, we're not compliant. Uh, so in this publisher pack that uh, will give you this view of Autodesk licensing, uh, so the normalization that runs through all installed software will sort out all the software installs and uh, software that's been accessed that uh, requires a license. So in this list view, we can see, all right, what entitlements do we have for uh, for Autodesk? Do we have any suggestions how we can remediate uh, that we're not compliant? And do we have any removal candidates that uh, we could actually reallocate the licenses? So the remediation options in this case could be we need to purchase uh, additional rights. And this is one example how you can automate the process, but also you can have a, a a workflow to help you with this. So if I need to buy five actionable rights for Autodesk AutoCAD architecture, we can uh, uh, move to the next step in this uh, uh, remediation option when we want to purchase these rights. So maybe I want to purchase these rights so I can create a purchase order directly in the SAM tool. And that will follow a, a process that we have uh, pre-configured, and it could be part uh, approval steps for the IT manager, for the R and D manager, and maybe for finance before you send off the purchase order to the appropriate vendor, for example, or reseller. And that's one way how you can in make sure that you follow the correct process, but also who you can automate several parts of that process and add approval steps. But maybe we want to improve our position before we make a purchase. So then we can move into the removal candidates. And removal candidates are actually automated jobs uh, that will detect unused or low usage of some software, access to software, or actually access to a, a licensing server. In this case, it's probably a licensing server because it's the, the Autodesk as a publisher. And we have set the justification rule to low usage. And that could be uh, maybe that less they have used it less than three times in three weeks, for example. These justification rules could be differ depending on user, type of software or type of entity uh, or type of vendor. So if we look into one of these automated jobs, the removal candidates that alerts us that this is low usage, we can look into this record. As I mentioned, it's low usage. The user is the LMS admin in this uh, case. 
you can see what's the configuration item that is actually in this case it won't notify the user otherwise we could have part of that automated process that it notifies the user if they approve to remove the software it will be removed you could also notify uh, the manager for that business unit business unit for example so uh, if I want to override uh, this process I can move into reclaim the license and once again it's an automated workflow when we reclaim that license remove uh, the user and you can reharvest the license and allocate it for a new user for example one more example of how we can automate the process so we looked at the workspace and the overview in the sand tool and we'll see in the license usage tab how we have this overview of a publisher and all the products and in the list view how we can see what entitlements do we have for this product do we have any remediation options and removal candidates an automated way to highlight users or entities that not using the software and how we can create an automated process, a workflow to remove these licenses uh, and uh, take action directly in the SAM tool. So if we wanna analyze our engineering licensing uh, aspects, we move into the analytics tab. And in the analytics tab, uh, we can move into engineering licenses overview. So here we can see both for uh, these SaaS integrations to engineering licenses, but also uh, the integration to OpenLM when we get the licensing data into the service now. Of course, we can filter on various publishers, on a date, on a particular user, or one of the licensing servers. But I would like in this scenario have the overview on the top denied products, for example. Uh, and if I want to dig deeper into it, I can directly in the widget click on it and I get a report on right what is the normalized publisher, what was the discovery software, and who is the actual user that was denied, for example. And uh, of course, we can see the utilization of these engineering uh, applications. And if I wouldn't like to analyze license usage over time, and if it's denials or usage, we can have this overview for uh, over the last couple of days or weeks, how uh, different users have accessed the software. And especially when it comes to engineering licensing, uh, denials are quite severe because I, th I think it's super important that these are very expensive licenses are fully utilized and we can see that in 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 some of these sessions we have users that are idling so they have checked out the license but they're not actually using it which means that we will have users that will try to access uh, these applications and they are denied which means that they are stalled in their project and can't work on uh, their their um, their assignment at the moment, which could be much more costly that they get stalled in the project than buying additional licenses. However, engineering licenses are, are uh, usually very, very expensive and you would like to optimize usage over it. But with this view, we can see how many denials we have, who is actually idling their licenses, who are the uh, users that are usually denied. And then we can analyze how come they usually are denied and uh, how come these users are idling. So you can put up new policies and processes. And you can also automate the process. So we saw earlier the reclamation workflow when we uh, this reclamation job highlighted and notified you as an asset manager, users that are not actually using the software. We can have a, a similar workflow to actually reharvest licenses now when users are idling more than 30 minutes or 60 minutes which means that they will be unassigned and the license will be available for new users that are trying to request it for example so uh, and it, 
one more example how you can automate that process and and that's possible when you have it in the same platform and you can use the the engine flow designer in ServiceNow how to automate that process and of course in ServiceNow um, uh, managing the licenses and usage creating access to it is one part but one part is also how to manage your contracts so uh, in the same platform you can have this overview of all your different contracts in this case we have adobe and citrix and microsoft but it could also be the contracts of uh, of the engineering licenses so then you get the overview when do we need to renew this enterprise contract for example and you can plan that process uh, and in the same platform as you do the rest of your license management excellent so uh, that was the end of the demo. I hope that I was able to show you uh, the power of the platform. Uh, it's easy to give access to users and you also you can automate the steps, uh, which means that you follow a process and uh, you try avoiding mistakes in this case. So the key takeaways, we connect everything in one platform. You can automate the process. With different workflows uh software asset management is a matter of people processes and technology so when you have everything in the same platform you can create these workflows to enable users to follow these processes in the automated way and that will optimize software spend and mitigate the risk of not only in compliance but also give access to these expensive engineering tools for your engineers so they're not idling and get stalled in their projects uh thank you very much uh we move into michael i'm going to show you uh, the next step how we integrate to open lm as part of this process thank you very much daniel So let me just know if my screen is visible. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay, perfect. So now I will talk about a little bit of a high overview. And, you know, as you can see, what are the challenges of uh, engineering software license monitoring? So basically, there are a few of them, and I divided them into four categories, where the first one is the visibility. And this should be the starting area to look at because you have all your contracts, you know, they are spread around in emails, documents, license file, and, you know, in some cases, and this is not unusual for the license administrators, if you are talking about engineering licensing, that they keep their data in the spreadsheet. And, you know, that might work for really small operation or, you know, just one department where they have few applications to track, but it gets more difficult, which each other application that you need to track. So let's start with the simple and uh, important task, uh, and that is renewal. So if you are lucky enough and you know you have your renewals packed into two or three months, then you pretty much know when you should start reviewing the contracts uh, and uh, basically start working on them, right? And here the biggest challenge is to make sure that you start in time in order to get your new license file and you don't have to rely on extensions because those can be very costly with some of the vendors. So simple as it is, uh, you know, why you should do this task manually if with software license monitoring, uh, you are be able to have uh, as a first place, single place where you have overview about your all your renewals, but you will also can receive a notification whenever the renewal is due. So it can be custom 30 days, 45 days, 60 days, whatever is the time you need for you to prepare. And you know, now you are with the renewal self-sufficient. You don't have to rely on spreadsheets. You don't have to rely on information for the procurement, for example, or, you know, tick the information wherever it might be as our products are able to read the feature expiration date from the license file. Uh, okay, so the next area of visibility is your license quantities, okay? And again, you already have the information, right? So all the quantities for all the features that you have are stated in the contract. 
Uh, they are available in the license file. You know, they might be available on the vendor uh, portal or some cloud, whatever is the case. Again, what you are missing is single place to go where you can review what does your organization own. You know, when I'm working with uh, our customers, many times this is the scenario. There is no centralized management. And, uh, you know, the central IT is uh, in better cases taking care of, you know, standard SAM applications that are interested in Microsoft, they're interested in Oracle, Adobe to some extent. And, you know, engineering applications are many times managed by engineering or by engineering IT, or, you know, sometimes even department-wise where the each team is managing whatever they are using. For example, last week I was uh, having a session with one of the prospects and, you know, they were just interested in monitoring SOLIDWORKS in order to optimize the contracts they have. And it was a really small deployment where they had uh, three licensed servers for SOLIDWORKS, you know, one in EU, one in Australia, one in China. And what we did, we installed OpenLM Broker which is the component basically that is uh, feeding the data from the license manager to the OpenLM server. And, you know, it has also the auto detect functionality. So basically it will detect on the ports, uh, whatever running license managers they are, and it will add it to the monitored applications. And to the prospect surprise uh, on the Australian server, it was not only SOLIDWORKS running, but, you know, there was also a few other license managers, which they were not aware of. And, you know, this is not rare. And uh, many times this is when they start asking the question, what do we own? And by asking this question, eventually you will find out that uh, in order to get a consolidated overview of your engineering applications that you own, you need a tool that will allow you to monitor all the license managers that you have. And this factor of limited visibility mm, makes it this high level overview really difficult and, you know, this is, again, where OpenLM and ServiceNow will, will help you. Because as stated before, getting the inventory is a simple task, you know. You need to install one broker per one license server. Auto detect functionality will check for the running license managers. It will send the data from them to OpenLM server. And then all the data from the OpenLM can be synchronized to ServiceNow. So now you have the whole inventory in one place where it is easy to analyze what you own. Uh, and, you know, you can then analyze if you have something with the same functionality, for example, if you have some legacy applications, you know, that were used in the past or some applications that might be out of scope of the business, you can basically analyze all these factors. But, you know, this is just the basically first step of gaining knowledge to your application portfolio. So let's now talk a bit uh, about the utilization. So in a standard SAM, you are looking at what you own, or to be more precise, at the number of installations, right? Because this is how those contracts are defined, and this is the information that you are looking for. And on the contrary, uh, with engineering software license monitoring, the key metric or the key piece of information is how well is the application used, you know, since we are looking mostly at uh, network concurrent, uh, network named, network tokens, named non not, sorry, named non network licenses, or it could be a combination of those. You are paying for the total quantity of applications that can run at the same time. So the number of installation here is uh, irrelevant. So what do you need to know is how well the application is utilized. So you are looking for the quantity that you own versus the peak utilization. You also want to look at the denials and the idle time. So the key common metrics here are session information. What is the start time of the session? End time of the session? What is the session length? Then the asset information. So basically the user, workstation, IP address, and also actual usage information, which is the usage versus the idle usage. So talking about the idle time, it might look as a first glance that uh, this is only important for the concurrent licenses. You know, somebody who is not working with the application is blocking somebody who needs it. 
However, even with the non-network named license, it can be relevant because it can reveal a person who doesn't really need it. So what you can do is you can look at an alternative way of allowing them to use the software. They can maybe use some tokens, you can switch to concurrent, you can find them some cheaper application alternative, for example, right? And uh, it will also reveal many incorrect practices for license usage. So now that we know what are the metrics, uh, let's talk about how to analyze them. So our input uh, is the title entitlement information, and in case of named, li named licenses, also the allocation information, then the usage information, uh, your contractual and license usage scopes. Additionally, it could also be the application or the license purpose, you know, or the business unit, department, team, user purpose as well. And now we need to analyze the peak usage versus the quantity owned. And you can ask the question, is the peak usage reaching the quantity owned? And if yes, how close it is? Is there still some buffer or is it reaching the total seat count? So, you know, some of the users are already facing denials just because you don't have enough. What are the projections from the business? Will there be any deviations in the future? Will there be more projects, fewer projects, increase headcount, decrease headcount, you know, by how much? And all these factors basically needs to be taken into the consideration. The second stage here is to analyze the session information. So you can aggregate and analyze the sessions per user, per group of users, project or department, business unit, and you will be looking for the outliers. Are there sessions that are using the license for too long or too short? Or, you know, is there any user group business which is uh, using a license which is not in their portfolio? or not in their portfolio, for example. And then the next, the third stage is the idle information. So you need to know why is this happening? And you know, this is the common practice in the organization to leave the application idle. That's for example, one of the questions, right? Concern here is basically to identify uh, whether is this incorrect application usage preventing others from taking the license, right? It doesn't have to be the case. But if so, uh, this is a primary issue that needs to be taken care of immediately. And if not, it should be analyzed whether is idling uh, introducing some unnecessary cost. It probably will, and then the next question will be how much it is, right? The fourth stage here is uh, analyzing the license model. Uh, there is basically a need to understand if there are some overlapping application functionality. Uh, it can be within the individual application. Uh, a good example here could be Katia and their MD2 versus HD2 licenses. Or it can also be between different applications, for example, Autodesk Inventor and Dassault SolidWorks, right? And there is also possibility that there will be overlapping usage where the user is consuming licenses for those applications at the same time, for example. And the last stage finally is analyzing the denials since denials always pointing to some problem, right? It might or not might be an insufficient amount of licenses. However, you know, you get the clearest picture if you complete these first four stages before that. You know, some denial reason could be even incorrect authorization rules in place or, you know, incorrect uh, application usage. So now that we know what we own and uh, how we are using it, we can go ahead and plan some optimization of licenses, which will result in reducing the licensing cost. There are licenses that are not used at all. And, you know, many times uh, those are part of a bundle when they are claimed by the vendor for free, but, you know, it might add some percentage to the total cost of the bundle. And these are usually all kinds of viewers, converters, you know, some other utilities. And whatever is the case, the information that you have that it's not used is giving you an upper hand in contract negotiations. If you are sure that there is something in your portfolio that was never used even once, right? 
Then there are also uh, licenses uh, where you clearly have too much and you can lower the number according to your peak usage, you know, with some buffer, for example. If no other factors mentioned before, projects, high risk, and so on, will change the license lifecycle. And, you know, same is true for the overlapping application and licenses. So saving money is definitely great and, and valid if an organization is clearly overspending on them. However, the main concern of license administrator should be the availability of the licenses. Engineering and specialty licenses are for sure expensive, right? But, uh, you know, what is even more expensive is the time of your end users or your engineers, right? Because the unavailability of an application when they need it is first adding to the frustration of the end user might lead to incorrect behavior that we want to prevent in the in the first place, right? And if there is a fear that the license they need for their day-to-day -day work might not be available tomorrow, keeping idle applications running, for example, is definitely incorrect, but in this case, you know, it's uh, perfectly understandable. So, you know, it is happening in many, if not all organizations where the visibility is not there, you know, End users are not to blame, license administrators are not to blame as well, because without the information and the analysis of your, basically your licensing decisions are just estimates that might be more or less accurate, but still only estimates. So the conclusion here is basically all these steps I spoke about take some time, take effort, you know, can be even hard, especially if, as I said, no visibility was there before and no procedures were in place, but here is where comes open element service now, because then the task will become easier, less time consuming. And in the end, it will benefit all. It will benefit the administrators. It will benefit the end users. It will benefit the budget. It will benefit the whole organization. So this is the overview. And now how you can get your data to the service now. So basically you have your license servers with uh, different license managers. You have the OpenLM brokers. One broker is installed per one license server and it's feeding the data to the OpenLM system to the server, which have its own database which is storing the data. And we have a simple component, which is called the ServiceNow adapter. And that is one per day basically synchronizing all the information from your OpenLM database to, to ServiceNow and its database. Now, uh, we can help you to gain visibility on majority of the engineering applications that you have, because we are supporting now uh, 69 license managers. So that can account to more than 25, 30,000 applications or engineering applications. And uh, then with this data, you can use the ServiceNow platform to get different kind of reports, product usage, license consumption, denials, your spendings, and you can get uh, optimization opportunities. So uh, here you can see what you get from the OpenLM, what you get from, from ServiceNow. So we are reading the license inventory and your purchasing amounts feeding them to service now. Then we can uh, provide the information about aggregated concurrent license usage, feed it to service now. We can get all kinds of information about your sessions, we can feed it to service now. Uh, then, you know, not mandatory, but helpful for almost all the customers, you know, additional information about users, groups, projects. We can also get them, feed them to service now. And again, same is true for the denials. We will get them, feed them to service now. And then the service now will provide you their engineering application cost effectiveness. Again, you can view the aggregated engineering license spendings. You'll be having the different kinds of reports, detailed engineering license consumption. One of them, you will get notifications on licensing event. As I was saying before, you know, the renewal date, simple but uh, very useful one, and lots more. And the you know, maybe most important part that you will have everything in one place, your standard SAM applications and engineering applications as well. 
So we used to say that the OpenLM and ServiceNow are, are better together. Uh, I had some prospects which was thinking that, you know, the OpenLM is a simple data extractor, which is, you know, providing the data about your uh, engineering uh, license workflow to OpenLM. But, uh, you know, that's not true. They are, they are, they are working together now. They are, they, are, they are two systems which are complementing each other. And, you know, from the OpenLM, you have some functionality, some added functionality. One of them is live monitoring on your current activity because the, the brokers are reading the, the data from your license managers, you know, in live time, in real time. So you can view them. You can view whoever is using the license right now, who, who is he or she, you know, where they are from, from which business unit, location, what's their uh, IP address, so what's their workstation, all this information. Then there is also the remote uh, license uh, server management. You can via the broker do tasks like restart the, the license manager, start it, stop it. You can reread the license file. You can upload new license file, download the log files, whatever you need. Then it is also possible to do the automatic license harvesting of idle sessions. And you can, for example, also from the UI do the license allocations and reservations, for example, through the option files for the for the FlexLM, right? And ServiceNow, as uh, presented by Daniel, is very powerful and customizable via interface. Again, everything is integrated uh, with your some information. And, you know, last but not least, there is the cost center management. So, you know, how much you are spending and, you know, what are your potential savings. So what you can take from this all, you know, you basically need the visibility about your engineering software and, you know, all your software, which you are paying for uh, to help you, you know, uh, basically overspend on those applications and to make it more available to the end users. And also you will be able to do more accurate usage forecasting, basically better informed decisions of what you will need in the future. And, you know, since we are running a little bit low of time, I will just really quickly want to show you how easy it is to get the data from OpenLM to, to the service now, right? So this is my, my OpenLM system where I'm monitoring different license managers. And in order to get the data to service now, I will just go here to our external platform where you can provide the URL to your ServiceNow instance, username and password. You will on the ServiceNow end, just go to the ServiceNow App Store, download the OpenLM application, install it, and you can connect those two. That's it. You know, uh, as I said, uh, very simple. And then, you know, once you synchronize the data, every day it will do the increments and you can again view the information which are the key metrics to you, right? So what are your top used products? What are your top active users? Which users are idling too much, right? You need to get, identify those. You can see from which part of the world, you know, your usage for those applications is coming. So in form of compliance, you can use that also. Information about denied products, denied users, which are the top. Then you have the summary of your of your license usage. All of those uh, information you can uh, filter by product or by publisher, right? So here you can see what is your total license count, what's your usage, what's your denials aggregated by days. You have full visibility of your license inventory, right? So all the features are listed here. Then again, all the license managers are listed here. So you know what you have, where do you have it? And last but not least, you know, slice and dice the information about the denials. So guys, let me just reload the page. Ah, no, now it's coming up. So again, basically denials over time, denials by product, denials by license server. And this is all, you know, just out of the box. Uh, everything is stored in open one database. So you can create your own graphs, your own reports, you know, whatever your organization needs, everything could be done. So, you know, 
basically, as I used to say, only the sky is the limit. So thank you very much. That was all from me. And uh, now we can move to questions.